Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 243rd episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Shea for the Sales Whisperer, your host, if you missed number 242. Check it out. Jason Canigan, great guy. He's an immigrant from uh, Canada, um, had to hire an attorney to get his affairs in order so he could get a job here in America. He was driving uh, and delivering pizzas on the side to make ends meet. Um, he turned things around and is quite successful working uh, on a sales um, staffing type business. Um, and I actually interviewed his partner, Jeremy Pope. He'll be coming up uh, in a future episode. Uh, but a down-to-earth guy with some great advice on how to stick it out. Uh, and that is on episode 242. Uh, coming up next week is Zach Smith. He is the founder of Funded Today. Um, actually, they are the top fundraiser on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. A uh, young guy blowing it up. Uh, you're going to love his story. So make sure you tune in uh, to episode 244. Today we have Steve Benson. He is a uh, Stanford MBA. He was working at Google, making a killing, and he left it all behind to start a business, to follow a dream, to scratch an itch, uh, to solve a pain that he saw in the marketplace. And uh, you're going to love his story of how he, he took action and uh, how he's making things happen. He's also going to be a guest uh, on the CRM Sushi podcast. So yeah, he gave me a demo just uh, last week, actually. And so that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. So be sure to check that out, and I'll link over to that as well. Uh, I've got a couple new URLs for you to check out. I've been remiss in just mentioning myself in all of these things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but hey, I've got a referral program. You know, If you send me someone that buys HubSpot, Infusionsoft, Entreport, uh, I will throw some cash your way. Uh, check out referwest.com, referwest.com. And um, you can make up to 500 bucks. You can get up to $800 in training, one-on-one -on -one training with me. Uh, so if you know somebody looking for these platforms, uh, looking to get more out of them, referwest.com. And if you need some help, just getting things mo better. Now, I've got a 90-day private consulting uh, and coaching program, and this is a hands-on. Uh, it's more than coaching. We get down to the nitty-gritty. I've got clients. I'm um, editing their copywriting. I'm editing their emails. I'm logging into their platforms with them to work on follow-up sequences and the timing and the headlines. And, uh, you know, if it's a platform that I know or that my team knows, and we know a lot of them, uh, we can dig in there as well. But uh, that is Copy by Wes, C-O-P-Y. So kind of like a copywriter, right? Copybywest.com. Uh, that'll redirect to my landing page. It's got the um, overview of everything, testimonials, and you can order right there. All right. So you can make yourself some money, referwest.com, or I can help you make some more money on your own, copybywest.com. Now let's jump in to our interview. Stop. Steve Benson with the cutest Skype profile picture, a little puppy with a little, uh, I don't know, is that a lay <laughs> around the dog? I don't know, man. Uh, but uh, according to your bio, you're like a sales stud. So I'm not going to hold that against you. All right. So welcome to the sales podcast, man. How the heck are you? Pretty good. And, and you know, the, uh, holding a puppy has never hurt anyone throughout any part of the sales cycle. If you're, if you're holding a, pike, a puppy, I've actually calculated that you're 42% you're more likely to go, along, go on to the next sales stage. Yeah, but, you know, your 82.3% of statistics are made up on the spot. So <laughs> That was one of them, actually. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what you're saying, okay? And, but, man. This dog has like some greenery around its neck, and it looks like you have like a matching boutonniere or whatever on your. That's right. It's it's my it, that that picture is actually from my wedding day, and uh, and the the dog was actually a part of the wedding party, so he got he got like a little flower flower necklace that matched that matched everyone else's flowers. I, I assure you, Wes, none of this was my idea. This was kind of foisted upon me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just say you just say yes ma'am and just go with it. I mean dude, I never knew what a doily was till I got married. And then I think we had two tons, you know, like mm -hmm. four thousand metric uh, or meters, square meters of the stuff within a month of being married. So I mean I hear you. Yeah, I, I don't know why we need 
lacy things on things, but we do. It's very important. But it is a cute dog. What it, what kind it, of dog is that? It, it's uh you know he's a rescue, but we we so we're not exactly sure exactly. But he, he's mostly Pomeranian. Like he really looks a lot like a Pomeranian. He might have a, a few other things in him, like Skipper Key or something. But uh, <laughs> it's a it, it, it's the Pomeranian is is not the brightest or most obedient of <laughs> of dogs, but they are they are extremely good looking. That that one actually is uh, is the office dog here at at Badger Maps. He uh, he comes into the office every day and. And uh, you know he sits in people's laps and runs around the office doing doing cute things, and uh, you know having a dog around the office is nice. It really uh, really ups uh, uh, ups employee satisfaction in general. People people love having him around. He cheers people up. Well, you know, I must be the Pomeranian then of of sales trainers. You know, not, <laughs> I'm very smart. Uh, doesn't take instructions very well, but some people consider me very cute. So, I mean, I, I, I will run around, and sit on your lap, you know. But uh, you, you got to have coffee or donuts, and you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I'll I'll roll over for food. So. <laughs> There you go. All right, man. So look, you you got like this stellar background, right? Stanford MBA, IBM, HP, Google, and then you leave all that to start your own business. Are you crazy? I'm mean, in in retrospect, yeah, I would say that that is uh, a crazy move. It, it worked out in this particular instance because Badger Badger is is doing great things and helping a ton of field salespeople now. But it, in retrospect, it's. Uh, Risk adjusted, it's a crazy thing to do to start a company. Like you, <laughs> it's it's just not it's not in the realm of sanity. Right. So you were let me see here. You were Google Enterprises top sales exec in two thousand and nine, mm-hmm. and within three years you left all that behind. Yeah, and Google is an especially painful place to uh, to leave, especially if you're uh, a big eater like me, because they actually they make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for you, and there's just there's nothing like it. I mean, they they have they're a, a, a cool company with with some some great products that really don't have a lot of competition in the marketplace. So they make a lot of money and they're sitting on a lot of money and and they spend some of that on employees. And man, I, I ate a lot of I ate a lot of good food there. So it was it was extra extra hard to uh, to leave and and start a company and move on to the uh, the old peanut butter and ramen diet. Yeah, I uh, I sold uh, hardware to Google for test and measurement for the networks, and I ate well every time I visited. <laughs> yeah, it's it's surprisingly good. It's like a restaurant. That was all right. So uh, so what compelled you? So Badger Mapping, uh, for our listeners that don't know, you are it like it helps plan or plot sales, what sales calls or. Pers- or prospects maybe close to uh, a customer so they can be more efficient when they're out in the field? Yeah, basically. I mean, it, you know, so Badger does a bunch of things now focused on the the field salesperson. So field salespeople have a lot of unique problems, and, and uh, they're asked to do a lot of busy work. They're asked, there's a lot of planning involved in, in successful field sales. And what Badger's done is gone about creating a product that works on their iPhone or their computer or their Android that, that allows them to do a lot of this stuff in an automated way so they don't have to do it by hand. Um, the type of stuff being their their routing, their scheduling, their the timing of their day, the you know who, who are they going to see, when are they going to see them, in what order. Order, and with, with the goal of um, focusing them on the people that are most important, given where they're going to be, um, geographically speaking, on the map. Where, where are they going to be on the map? So given given that you have a 2 o'clock appointment here and a 10 o'clock appointment there on Thursday, who else should you be seeing and trying to set appointments with, given given your focus right now and, and given who's going to be on the way and around, around where you're going to be? What if you took this way home instead of that way? How could you avoid traffic? Um, so really the scheduling and the routing and the timing of the day. And then we do a bunch of other things like you know, automatically send data back to the CRM to, so that it's populated. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, circle around and do that again. We, we just integrate with it and send it back and capturing information automatically, ma- making it easy. So you can just, you know, talk into your phone and speech to text it instead of taking a bunch of, um, taking time in between each meeting to like, you know, get access to write it all down or get access to Wi-Fi and write it all down. We, we, we try to make it really easy to capture information and just make, make, make field salespeople more, more successful doing a whole bunch of different things. Right. 
Well, we're going to have to have you on my new uh, CRM Sushi podcast and have you demo all this. Yeah, uh, I'd be happy to. I want to dive into the story, though. I mean, how do you walk away from a big company, right? Um, I mean, were you married at the time? So that that is a, a key factor. I was not married at the time, and I think it, you know, it, I had relatively few responsibilities. I mean, my, my responsibility at the time, I didn't even have the dog then. Uh, the dog came um, through the wife uh, that I that that uh, that was acquired about two years ago. Um, and so before, in the company I started five years ago. So it, right. it would be. You know, it, it would be in a marriage. You know, you got to have everybody on board with these types of decisions, and to walk away from a, a high-paying, you know, a good job at a, at a good company and say, "Hey, we're sweetheart, we're not going to make any money anymore, and uh, <laughs> maybe we're going to lose a lot of the money we have, and uh, hopefully, some, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to build a company and kind of chase ch- chase down trying to solve this crazy problem that field salespeople have, and maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. I think it's possible, though, but, you know, we'll see if people like it. We'll see if you we're able to sell it. It's a it's a lot of big question marks, right. and uh, and it's one thing, you know, it, it, it's, it was one thing for me to take a, take a risk of that nature um, you know, I, at the time I was in my mid thirties and, and, ha- and really my only responsibility was to feed myself. And, and I, you know, I had saved enough money when I was at Google that, um, you know, I, I could at least feed myself on ramen till, uh, till 20, 29 or so, but <laughs> ah, <nice. laughs> yeah, ramen's only 11 bucks a pack, you know, it goes a long way. <laughs> so, so that, that, you know, it was, it was one of these situations where I, I, I was able to, to take the risk. My, you know, the rent was cheap. I have no, I had no real expenses. Um, now I have a surprising number of expenses. Um, now, now, now that I have acquired the wife, but <laughs> you, how did you, it, how did you test this idea? I mean, were you, were you very far along? Did you even have any paying customers before you went out on your own or did you no. have an idea and trust it and jumped? Uh, you know, I, I, in a perfect world, you, you vet the thing out, and, and get some paying customers before you, you, you leave. But in, in, with a complex piece of software, it takes a long time and full-time work to get it going, right? So, you know, it, it's just – it. there was no way to keep my day job and, and do what I did here. We were, you know, it, it needed to be a full-time endeavor. It needed to have an you know, investment around bringing on other people to help build the thing and, and help uh, create the company and run the company. And, and, and uh, there's a lot of blocking and tackling that, that, that goes into it. it it's, it's hard to create a complex thing out of your, out of your, uh, out of your garage part, part-time. So I, I you know, I felt like I understood the user, the field salesperson, because I was one, and I I understood the problems that they faced, and I had a pretty good idea of of how how modern mapping and and and, and the direction that mobile devices were going, just because I I'd, I'd worked on the mapping team at Google, and I was very familiar with with uh, mobile and kind of where that where where that was trending. Um, and also cloud computing. I'd worked on the cloud the cloud computing team, uh, enterprise software at Google. So, it, you know, and that was my background as well in, in the other techno- technology companies that I'd been at. And so I, I felt like I understood the technology and, and what where it, the direction that the the puck was going, and I could skate to it. And and I understood uh, the user and what their problems were, were. And I and I felt like I I really could create some value in in their lives and and create something that you know. Helped helped a lot of people do a lot better in, in their role, right? So how how do you do that though? I mean, you you see an opportunity. Did, did you raise money? Did you did you bounce this idea off of a few people first? They're like, yeah, you're not crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you start doing some coding? Anything on the side, or did you just say, no? I mean, I, so I don't code. Um, <laughs> well, or even even hire sub it out. I mean. Yeah, no, you know. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I didn't do any of that. I mean, I, 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 I planned, I planned it, and I planned what would need to happen to create the business, and and you know, thought about the types of people that I would need to to have involved, and, um, uh, but it, you know, one, line one of code was not was not written when when the company was formed. Hmm. What was formed? I mean, did did you 
Did you have developers lined up? Um, did you bring in any outside money? I mean, I'm just trying to think. I like to get to like literally yeah. that source code, right? The, the genesis, like, mm-hmm. you know, was it, okay, I see the opportunity. So, hey, Google, I quit. Two weeks later, you're sitting at home saying, okay, now what do I do? Or did you like have any kind of no, momentum? No, I, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I know. Had, I had momentum and I had a plan. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was... The, I also had a, a plan which I, I didn't follow follow all that well around how I was going <laughs> to bootstrap the thing, which was which was uh, I was going to do consulting uh, on Google Maps to large businesses that needed specific projects done, um, and we did a little of that, but not not nearly as much as one would have hoped. Uh, we, we found some other areas that we could do consulting in that were a bit more more valuable that helped bootstrap the thing a bit but it is we are in a unique company in that we were if we're mostly bootstrapped we brought on some friends and family money um the vast majority being uh founder money um and uh and and, and invested that in the company um but uh but we never did it. We never raised VC money. Uh, we kind of built built the business on on the back of its revenue, and that's continued today. So you know, when we bring on a new large customer, that you know, we hire someone. So we we basically uh, the money comes in the door and the money goes out the door, right. and uh, and and that's uh, it, that's that's a hard way to build a business, but it's but it's a a sustainable way to build a business in that uh, you know you you uh, you grow. You grow at a, at a at a at a pace that you can really control, and and you can stay healthy, and you never get out over your skis. So, uh, you keep saying we. Do you have a partner? Uh, well, they, there were uh, there were we. I had a founder, a co-founder, and then uh, and then the and then we hired another. We hired an engineer and made him a co-founder as well. Um, probably. Uh, three months into this into the company's life cycle or so. So early on, we had an early employee that that joined uh, as a co-founder. So a total of three co-founders. Gotcha. And then how big is the company now? We have uh, twenty five people at the company, cool. and then a bunch of interns too. Very nice. So how long was it from the time you you quit Google to the time you had a paying customer? Ooh, uh, probably, probably about four months, but that wasn't a paying customer on the product that we finally built. That was a paying customer on, uh, uh on kind of doing some custom mapping work for them. Okay. Uh, so you were doing that just kind of keep the lights on? Yeah. Well, that, the, the initial, the initial way we wanted, we wanted to fund building the actual piece of software that we wanted to build with doing consulting projects, kind of right or hovering around it. So that we were, we would kind of be building the features of the product through these consulting engagements, um, but that really it proved to be more of a distraction, um, and and we ended up just uh, just focusing our our efforts on on the actual product that we ended up building. But the initial initial goal was to reduce risk by bringing in revenue um, around you know that's kind of around the, the solving around the problem basically that we were trying to solve. So were you just coding like crazy for those four months and then got your first paying customer for consulting that offset a little bit, but exactly. And setting up the business and getting, getting all the pieces in place. Um, you know, there's a lot of blocking and tackling around just setting up a business and getting things together and doing things legal and (laughs) keeping, keeping everything in compliance basically. Right. Uh, so how long before you had somebody buy the actual product like you know off the shelf that you know the app mm. um i'd say about nine to ten months okay but that was a pretty stripped down version right. um they you know, so so the, the first thing we built was the ability to display um display all your points on a map colorized uh meaning by 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 a by a feature so uh, by a an attribute of a customer so let's just say you sold you were a field salesperson who sold stuff to dentists orthodontists and pediatricians and you and if you wanted to you you could then bring bring all your customers onto the map and then see all the customers in the map 
colorized by whether they were a dentist, orthodontist, or pediatrician. You know, pediatricians in blue and orthodontists in green and uh, dentists in red. Um, and then, then the next thing we did was make it so you could you could uh, then filter by multiple attributes. So then maybe, well, let's make the let's make the pediatricians disappear off the map and also anyone who is is paying us less than 30 grand a year may make them disappear off the map or anyone who has you know any, any dentist that has uh you know only one dentist I, I want disappeared i only want to see offices with two or more dentists you know just because that's a good gauge of size um it, whatever the attribute is, we we made it flexible so that whatever, whatever the customer was, we could make it so um, it was it was filterable and colorizable. The, that's what, and it was that first thing, just the colorizing that that initial customer got for their their sales team, and then um, and then we kind of built on it from there. Added the filtering, added uh, added route building and scheduling capabilities, like the the ability to build out your day. Um, you know, by in order and optimize optimize where you're going to be and when, and then the, then added the ability to then send that to your calendar and integrate with your calendar. They built it out on the mobile device and native app. Um, built out the ability to kind of grab groups or an area of customers with so, with what we call our so lasso how, tool. How did you how did you sell that though initially? Right, you get that first customer. That this has to be like a bleeding edge kind of person, right? To to be the yeah. first one. And, and do you tell them, "Hey, you're our first one." Yeah, he knew. He knew that it was he, he knew that he was the the first major customer. We had a few individuals using it at the same time, but uh and the you know, the guy was a was a thought leader. Um, right. his name's Imran Rafiq and he's uh, he he was uh you know he's he's uh, he's not at the company that he was then anymore. He's moved on to a a role where he's a he's a consultant at Accenture. But he's just he's a thought leader in the space of of mobile, and so right. now he works in the Accenture's mobile team. And you know the guy's a the guy knows a ton and under he he could see where the puck was going on this, and he saw he saw the same vision as I did. Right, and and that's one of the ways you get your first customers is you kind of say, hey, you know this is our vision, this is where we want to go. And, and if they're like, hey, that's where I want to go too, and then you're like, hey, well, you know, by being customer number one here, you uh, it's going to be cheaper for you uh, by being in, in I, mean, I guess on any of your earlier earlier customers. It's hey, you, you're you're an early customer here. This is going to be become a customer now. Sign up, pay up front, so we can so we have money to keep the lights on here and build this thing for you. But it's cheaper now than it's going to be in two years. Uh, so you're kind of getting a deal because you, you you're getting a deal for being early. But also, you get to have a hand in shaping this thing. You know, you 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 get to be. You know, you you guys have some unique needs, and we're going to build the stuff that you need because uh, because you're the you know you you're the you're the person taking the risk and you're you're the person paying the bills. So you know. So you, how you do you price you your that? Stuff. Right. Let's say you know. Let's say it's a hundred dollar a month app. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And well, but yeah. they're brand new. Do you price it at fifty dollars, like fifty percent off? Do you price it at still at a hundred? But you say, hey, you're going to get a lot more input. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you don't, you don't know where your pricing is going to land at the time. It depends, kind of like it, it, pricing does tend to expand over time as you create more and more value for customers. Yep. Um, but uh, but what, you know, whatever you're. Whatever you, you you charge, I think for those initial customers, what you think is fair and what you think you can get, and uh, and 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 you know that you can tell them, hey, in two years it's going to be five times more, and you don't know that for sure either way. I mean, who knows? Who knows where? You, who knows we're going to be in two years? You might be out of business in two years if you're, right. you know, if, if this is customer number one, but. Because um, there might not be a number two, <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh, but hopefully you are in business in two years, and hopefully it is five times the price. But even if it isn't, I mean, it's not like they can hold you to it. I mean, it's they're, they're the uh, that's just the talk path to close the deal. I think is is that you you can kind of say, hey, you know, you're you're customer number one, so you know, hopefully there's a number two. But uh, right. but you you're gonna we're gonna solve this problem for you, and 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 uh, you know you, you're getting in early, and you're getting a good deal because of it. How did you find that first one? Was it was it a cold call? Was it a referral? You know, friend of a friend? It, it was an in-mail, actually. Um, and inmates? A, what were you doing in jail, man? Come on. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. 
in in in, in mail, a, a LinkedIn in mail. Oh, LinkedIn! Oh, you you gotta tell me this stuff. Can you hey, speak clearly? Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm a salesman, dude. I'm, I'm I'm you know my mind wandered. I told you, Pomeranian. Right, right. So so basically, you know, in in mail is like an email, but you can send it to someone who you're not connected to in yep. LinkedIn. And so, um, you know, they if you have a premium LinkedIn account, they give you a certain certain number of them a month. And and his title was like the right title. He's like, you know, uh, director of sales operations and mobile. Uh, and I think I was doing a search for, for people that had the, the, the word sales operations in their title and mobile somewhere in their, in their, uh, in the body of their, of their, uh, their LinkedIn profile. And then, and then he was in the medical device industry. And so he was just the right that was who we 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 weren't even sure at the time we were testing it out, but we had give, given the people that we had talked to up till that point and and kind of had kicking the tires. We felt like Med Device was a really good fit for us because they have a ton of field salespeople. So he was the right guy at the right kind of company. And so we, you know, there were probably a thousand people that we had reached out to like this, and he was the one that was like, "Oh yeah, I've been thinking about this problem. Totally get it. This is an issue. We have this issue." And, and, and you guys look like you're, you're the only people trying to solve it. So right. I'm in, man, let's, let's do this. And he was, he was a big supporter of us internally. I mean, the product sucked for the first, you know, two years basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it was doing what we, what we said it would do. It did it slowly and it would crash and it, but it was doing what it, we said it would, it would do. It just, it was, it was, it was not the, not the most uh, stable thing, but right. which software often sucks when it's young. But, um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, he, he saw the vision and he's, and, and the, literally the, the second week that they, that they had the, the, the software deployed someone on his team and they, they had like 50 sales reps. So it's a medium sized sales team. Um, one of the, one of the reps was like, yeah, I found this, uh, I found this, this, you know, point on the map that I'd been neglecting. I didn't even realize that it, that it was there. I hadn't been there before, but it was, you know, somewhere in our CRM where it was, it was, you know, labeled. And I was, I happened to be in the neighborhood. I could see that it was there because I was looking at this map that you guys built and I swung by, you know, two weeks later, it's a $45,000 deal. So, oh, wow. and, and they, they had paid less than that for the entire year for, for our product. So, you know, that, that guy got to, got to look real smart. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Huh? Yeah. Well, and, and he is real smart. I mean, he's, he's obviously, he's a thought leader in, in the, in the mobile sales space. Right. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And, and a lot of times that's, it, it sounds trite and, and, you know, cliched, but cliches come from the truth, right? In that, Hey, if you just get one deal, it'll more than pay for itself for the entire year. And, you know, quite often that is true, but you gotta, everybody uses that pitch, you know, so you gotta yeah. come up with something so different. Well, uh, it's, it's, but that's awesome that it did. Selling, selling products to a sales team is, is really interesting and it's different than selling to other things. Like when you're selling to a product to it or to, um, you know, let's just take it. Like if you, if you, if you're selling a product to it and you're saying, Hey, this, this product's going to make this, this much more efficient, then they're often looking for cost savings. Like, well, hey, we're paying, you know, we're paying three hundred grand a year on that right now. And if it made it ten percent more efficient, like these guys are saying, we're going to save thirty grand. It's different when you're when you're making something that, that enables salespeople because you're like, hey, this is going to make your sales team sell fifteen percent more. People are like, well, I mean, if that was true, we're, we were selling, we sold a hundred million dollars in stuff last year. That would be a hundred and fifteen million. We we would make an extra 15 million bucks that would a lot of it, which would flow to the bottom line. So that if we did that, that would make our whole sales team more valuable. We could hire more sales guys. That would, that fuels growth. It's because you're, you're not a sales team is not a cost center. It's a profit center and it's a revenue driving center. And so when you do things to make sales better, it's uh, it changes the whole business and allows you to, allows you to, to hire more people, grow the company, uh, become more profitable. It, it's, it's a, so, but at the same, it, it's, it's harder and it's easier because a lot of the stuff that you're selling to, to, to salespeople, it's not, it's not a hard cost. It's not like, Hey, you were spending, you know, 50 grand to run the, this machine in, ele- in, ec- in electricity. And now you're only going to spend 40, you save $10,000. It's not saving. It's, you're going to sell more. You're going to bring in more revenue. And so it's not, it's it's harder, I think, for for businesses to to cleanly 
there's no budget item already that you're getting that you're making smaller. It's it's uh, it's a, a promise and a hope to grow the top line, so it can be a harder and longer sales cycle. Right. But you did it. Yeah. <laughs> so then, how long till you got your second client? Um, they started rolling in after that. I mean, once we got the first one, um, you know, we, we started being able to acquire customers faster. It, it really was still. I mean, it, it still is very. It, it, it was still very slow. I mean, you, you know, we. We get as many customers in, you know, two or th- two to three months now as we got in the first two years or something of the whole two, th- right, two to three years of the whole company. So it's it, it's uh, you know you in software a lot of times when you solve you solve a problem and all of a sudden it's like it really gets hardened right like the so- the product gets hardened where like you you're like this is the thing that we said we were going to do. It is doing it. Here's a video of it's doing it. You want to try it out and you can make sure it does it. Okay. You've tried it. You know, it does it. And you had this problem, which is why you're here. So now we're, now you're buying it. It right. becomes very, whereas when you're early, it's like, you don't know the exact people to tell that you're solving a problem. You don't know what the exact problem is or how to describe it. You're not really solving it that well because the software is, is crap. Um, you know, there, there's, it, those early deals you can are, are hard because you really need a, a, a special kind of person to jump on board when it, when the thing is a little rickety, and uh, and they really need to need to have the pain in the space and they're hard. You, you didn't tell it to them right, and you didn't bring them through the process right. Whereas later, as it hardens, you you know you can really start turning the crank, you know, and 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 not to mention. It's real hard to call to in, in it's it's way harder for for us to reach out to someone and say hey. Have you heard of this problem? Oh, you have this problem. Want to try this thing out? It's way easier when they're when they're some guy that works at their company that they, he used it as at his last company, and he's like, "Hey, yeah, I use this thing, and it's great. I uh, it it uh, it works really well, and I I use it at my last company. Can I have? Can I get this here?" And then the sales manager there is like, "Wait, oh, that does look cool. That would be helpful to you, huh? Oh, you use this? It worked. Well, maybe. Who, 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 do you know the person to talk to? Like, it's it's a w- w- those types of you know, referrals just go better and, and the sales cycles faster. They believe in it more, you know. So who was your, who was your first hire? You had a co-founder and you said, um, would you say within a few months, um, you brought on that engineer and made mm-hmm. him a co-founder or did you have him right away and, and but eventually made him a co-founder? Uh, he, yeah, waited, waited a few months to hire him. Um, so was it just you two, like just doing like, like contracted people yeah, we, for, for coding. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, and, 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 and the goal there was kind of to flesh out who the right person was to, to make the first hire to, to start building the engineering team. Cause once you pick that person, then they can really choose people going forward. And there, it's really hard to hire your first engineer because it's hard. To, if you're not, a, if you're not an engineer, it's hard to figure out who's really good at this and who's going to be a good leader in it. And, it's a it's a it's a skill set that's hard to define, right? Um, and so, and, how did you and, find and, him? Um, uh, through LinkedIn, actually. Um, uh, you know, it, it just looking for the pouring over a whole bunch of. Uh, oh, actually, I, you know, now that I think about it, it, it was it was uh, there was a, a list of people that was published that had had passed this one uh, mapping exam. Uh, oh. To be a, a co- to be who, who so people that had had gotten this it was almost like a certification of 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 mapping abilities uh, and coding ability and mapping and so we, I I looked up everyone on that list and there were like 150 of them or something and and and, and 10 of them looked like they were, would really be a good fit for the specific thing that I was looking to do and and I I probably talked to seven or eight out of the 10 people that were on that list were they and, all employed or were they unemployed. Um, they were all employed. I don't think any, uh, a few of them were kind of self-employed and doing consulting type stuff. But, um, I think in general they were all employed already. He was employed. So we had to kind of pull him away from him away. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Um, so we were doing that that while bootstrapped. Was that nervous? (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, we, the, the trick there was really, you know, being, being open and honest and forthright and kind of be like, we were like, listen, this is how much money we have. So we're going to take a real run at this. And we've got at least a year 
uh, you know, we're uh, of funding in the bank here. So we're going to we're going to take a run at this for at least a year. And hopefully the thing works out and we'll have gotten more money by then to, to kind of keep extending things out or we'll raise money by then or something. But we're here's the plan. Here's the problem we're solving. Here's why it's a big one. Here's why it's an important one. Um, and we're going to, and we're going to take a real run at this and, and, you know, and some people are in for that. Some people aren't right. Right. I mean, it takes a, it's hard to, it's hard to steal a great engineer away from Google, for example, because, you know, if somebody's making a half million bucks a year at Google, uh, coding and they get night, they get stock options every, they're investing every year. And so whenever they leave, they have to leave four years, four years of options on the table you know, no matter what, whenever they leave, they're going to walk away from a million bucks, basically, right. and and so they they really have to feel strong about the opportunity, and it's just you know risk adjusted, they're often better off staying at a great company like Google uh, right. or, or Facebook or any of these any of these major employers in the Bay Area of engineers, and so it's tough to pull them away, uh, frankly, and so you you really got to have a a solid vision and, a, and, and they have to know about the problem. They have to know, they have to understand the problem and they have to say, wow, yeah, that, that could really go somewhere. And mm-hmm. I'm willing to, I'm willing to take the plunge. Are you ever worried about, uh, at least back then explaining it and having somebody steal the idea? I mean, not really. I mean, you, you can't really, I mean, I, ideas can never be a secret, right? I mean, there are people that stay in stealth mode in certain industries for a little while, but I mean, Pretty quickly, you have to start having a presence and and on- online, and you got to have a website that explains what you do, and you got to have case studies that kind of talk about how people are using you and what the benefits are. I mean, the it, it, there there aren't many case. I, I don't. Like uh, you, you, you can't really worry about a big company going after it. I mean, if a, if when you're really young, a big company looks at something and says, "Oh, that's an awesome idea. Let's just build that." You're right. kind of screwed either way, right? Um, but in general, big companies, you know, they don't, they don't. If even if they were to try to do something, they would, they would just do it for their little ecosystem. Like if, let's just say, Salesforce had said, well, "We're going to build this and and lock this thing down in our ecosystem." That this exact problem that you're trying to solve, we're just going to solve it. It's a cool idea. Thanks for the idea, buddy. We're going to run with it. Mm. That wouldn't have killed us because there's 200 other CRMs, and and as soon as Salesforce had said, "Yeah, we thought this is sweet, and we're going with it," we got we we we, we put it in our product as a feature. All the other CRMs all of a sudden say, "Oh, well, wait. If they did it, then and they thought they said that it was important. Now we kind of we we really want to partner with these guys. We don't want to build it for the next two years and be two years behind those guys. We just want to partner with these guys today, yep. um, and and get this thing in our product right away. So it kind of depends. And, and you can't really worry about another startup just you know creating your product and running with it. I mean, they're always going to be six months behind, and you you just have to have the confidence that you're that you're you're going to be able to to, to beat them if they, we've actually had people basically totally rip off our product and follow us, but they're, they're literally two, two and a half years behind. And anyone that I think they get a lot of little, little crappy deals cause they have a cheaper product. And, and so if you're like a very price sensitive, um, like an individual user, you can end up in that with using their product. But for a, for an enterprise company, if you look at this space, very quickly, you're going to realize, oh, these guys are better. If you evaluate the two products next to each other, you're all, you would always choose us. And real businesses are less price sensitive. They want the thing that's going to make their sales team sell more than, rather than and, – and, and is less risky and is a better product as opposed to the one that's you know 20% cheaper. And so I, I, I think it's real hard to be number two or three in an industry like this. You, you really – it's not good to be the to be the uh, – the 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 lower end following product it, it's uh, that's a tough space to, that's a tough it's a tough play yeah well i love when people you know they want to talk with me about consulting or sales or whatever and i oh, need you to sign this nda and it's <laughs> like i think i'm just implementing a new policy if somebody asks me to sign nda i'm not gonna work with them well it's silly right and i've had people do that with me too and i'm like listen i'm the last person in the world that can steal your idea i don't have 
I already work. Th- I already work 85 hours a week on my stupid idea. I'm not going to work on. You. I'm not going to try to copy your stupid idea, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I, I've, I've already got five other five other stupid ideas. I'll just give them to you. You can work yeah, on one of them because I'm exactly. not going to do them. I'm, I've already, I'm already working on this stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like well, yeah, because it's like okay, so we're gonna. You, you think you want to work with me, but you immediately don't trust me. So why are we talking anyway? And, and secondly, it's like how are you going to enforce it if I do steal it? You know, because people, right. you know, that. They'll spend all this time and money on on IP, right, and and patents and stuff. It's like that's fantastic, you know, and, and God bless you. But if somebody steals your patent, you got to have the money to sue them. Yeah, yeah, you well, and, and yeah, it's all silly. So really I is. mean, at some point you do need it, but if you're brand spanking new and that's the first thing you're going to do is go spend all this money on attorneys, I mean, it's like good luck, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's it's crazy too. I mean, like you're worried. Some some guy who's doing his, who's doing something totally different is just going to hear your idea and be like, oh, that's brilliant. I, I think it's you know a, a lot of it, it's natural for for entrepreneurs to be a little paranoid and it's probably healthy, um, sure. but um, the, it, it's I think it's better to be transparent and let everybody know what you're doing and get the word out there as fast as possible and not try to keep the cards close to the chest because. You know, the, everybody's going to find out about the idea eventually. Anyway, you can't hide. You can't hide it for that long. Like this isn't. Uh, I'm trying to think of like an a, an analogy, but the, the, it's just it's not. I I don't think that's the risk in in creating a software company. Right. Yeah. Everybody freaks out. Yeah. I, I'd I'd love it if someone you know raised five million dollars and just tried to recreate my product because it's just going to create more more press for me and they're just going to they're going if, if all the deals that they kind of drum up and and get interested those people are all going to notice that I exist too and I'm five years ahead of them right so <laughs> it's it, yeah exactly I I, I uh, I'm happy to go toe to toe from a product perspective with with someone and do a bake off. Well, I remember when I was um, I was unemployed within six months of leaving the Air Force. And I had a wife, a baby, another one on the way. And, um, I mean, I just applied to Oakwood Homes through the classified ads in 1998. Mm-hmm. Uh, I needed a job. And, um, and I remember driving up to the lot, and there were just a bunch of other mobile home stores, you know, up and down this big major street. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I remember I was, like, concerned. You know, I said, man, it's... You got all these competitors like right here, you know, and he said, yeah. hey, we love it, you know, because people are, you know, we can use the competitors ads. We can, you know, the competitors run ads they are going to drive by us. You know, he mm-hmm. says, we just have to be better when the customer comes in. And yeah. as long as they're up and down this road, then they're interested. Yeah. And um, and he was really smart. He was a long time mobile home salesman. <laughs> and then we used to have these giveaways where. He would give um, like a half gallon or even a gallon of ice cream if you came in for a tour. And I was like, why the hell would you do that? All right? And he was like, because it would melt. Right? So people would immediately go home to put the ice cream in their freezer and not go shop anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty smart. <laughs> that is super clever. You know? uh, <laughs> so he'd go to the grocery store, cut a deal, you know, get all these half gallons for like two bucks. So yeah. for two bucks, he could lock out the competition. <laughs> oh, that's that's genius. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think how I can do that. It's, exactly. It's tougher. It's tougher in this industry. But I don't know. how can I mean, we do it with software as a service? Huh? <laughs> we, we just have to. We have to be better because any every single day, anyone could see. Like you know, most most people pay us well either annually or or, or monthly, right? And. Uh, you know, no matter what, they're only locked in for a year. So at the most, so at any, at any time, if someone created a better product than us or a cheaper product, if it was better, cheaper, faster, um, then, then people can, can, can leave us and go to them. And so, so we really, you know, this is a, it makes software a very competitive industry and, and you, you've got to be the best. You've got to have you, you, your engineers have to have to just create a great product. You have to be constantly listening to the customers to to find out what their problems are and, and how you can solve them. You got to make sure they're happy. You got to make sure they're, they're they got their stuff taken care of. If they have a question, it's got to get answered. Because you know it, you, you've got to be number one. There's there. Why would anyone? Why would anyone pick the number two? 
routing software for salespeople, right? Uh-huh. You, you, you got to You got to you, If you're a salesperson, you you want the you want the best software that's going to enable you to be successful. And uh, you know, there, there's there's you're not if you evaluate two of them and see one's better, that's the one you're going to get. Right. Yep. Amen. All right, man. Well, where should we send people to learn more about you and Badger Mapping? Well, our, our website's the best place to uh, to go. You can see what what we it's badgermapping dot com. You can just Google Badger Map. Um, you know, it, you uh, it, it shows little videos of the product. We have a free trial of the product. In fact, uh, if uh, if anybody if any of your listeners want uh, to try this out. Um, just have them, you know, mention the, uh, the name of the show, you know, the, the, the sales podcast, um, with Wes Schaefer here and, and, you know, just, just mention the name of the show to any of my people and I'll have them instructed to, to give you, uh, an extra two months on, on your, uh, of, of just free time with Badger to, uh, to check it out and, um, and, and use the thing. It's, uh, it's, it's very, it's super helpful for field salespeople. It just, it's, it's, uh, people tell us all the time that it helps them sell more and saves them a ton of time in the field. So take it for a spin. Man, I wish I had this a long time ago. I was selling, um, recruiting services out of Austin and, um, my territory was Texas, you know, the big cities, yeah. Dallas, mm-hmm. Houston. And uh, it was before I even had a cell phone. I mean, it was yeah. early 2000. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, I, I finally got them to pay for my cell phone. And they, we'd have to do line items uh, on my cell phone bill to see what percentage of my monthly bill they would pay. But I was, I'd use Yahoo Maps, mm-hmm. and, you know, I'd, I'd call, 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 get one appointment, right? So it's like, okay, got the first one. And then I would literally just call around everywhere near there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and see, and I remember one time getting lost. Um, and you know, I had to literally stop, pull over, go to a pay phone, didn't have change. Uh, I had to go somewhere else, you know, uh, break, uh, you know, whatever, a dollar bill, $5 bill and ended up being late. And, uh, and I told that company, I'm like, look, dude, I'm getting a cell phone and y'all gonna pay for it. Cause I'm traveling, but I would have all these little printed sheets on Yahoo maps. Yeah. Uh, with dots everywhere I was going and who was in between. Yep. Um, and so, and I've asked people, a friend of mine used to drive for UPS, you know, and they have similar type software, right? Even to minimize yeah, yeah. their left turns, right? So they can mm-hmm. go take right turns to get there faster. Yeah. They, so, they have their, they have a, a slightly different problem than a field salesperson and they've built, they've built their own software to, to accommodate that, you know, cause they've got, you know, oh, across a thousand or 10,000 trucks or whatever it is, we have these 40,000 packages to deliver in the next day. How are we going to do it? That's, that's a different kind of software than we make, but then they've, that's core to their business. They've, they've, they, uh, they built like UPS has their own FedEx has their own, all those companies. Like we don't, none of them are our customers. Actually, they, sometimes those companies, their salespeople will be our customers, right? But but their their trucks that's that's a different problem if you're doing deliveries like that especially at that scale right uh, that's a that's a slightly different problem yeah especially i mean because a salesperson just is because there's a prospect on the way doesn't mean that prospect wants to see you right um, right and, and doesn't mean you want to see them right? right doesn't mean they're a good prospect for you you got you know the half half of this is helping people focus on the right stuff and then giving them the way to actually go out and, and do it right. you know, they, people tend to get 20% more more meetings in a day in, in, more meetings in a week um you know if they were getting you know 20 meetings before and now they're getting 24 25 um uh right now that math's not right that's uh, that's 10% so where is that? Right? Yeah, yeah, no, twenty-eight. <laughs> they, you know, twenty-five percent more. So yeah, as if they were getting twenty, now they're now they're getting uh, they're they're getting uh, they're getting more. But the 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 point being that they're they're uh, it's it's more meetings, but then they're driving less miles, and those meetings are with more focused customers. And that the combination of those three things tends to drive uh, a lift in sales of ten to twenty percent. I've heard people say fifty, but that seems like a crazy number. But that's what that 
That's what we, we do hear that every now and again. And I think some people have more complicated territories than others. So it's like sure. they can just be a total disaster out there. Not, you know, just, and, and, and also some people can envision this stuff better than others. I think like, so I, I dated this one girl who could literally get, get lost like th- four blocks from our house. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know how she could do it, but she would call me on her cell phone. and I'd be like, well, uh, what, what, what are the street signs that you're looking at? And she would describe it. She'd be like, Oh, I'm here and here. I'd be like, you're, you're like four blocks South of us. And just go north. And she's like, which way is north? And I'd be like, yep. well, it depends which way you're looking. <laughs> 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 but but some, some people, and I think a lot of field salespeople historically have, have had a high level of that type of geographic intelligence. But um, you know, so, some, some people, you can just take them anywhere and spin them around three times, and they're not going to get lost. Other people, you know, it, it, uh, it, they, they're not as good at, at kind of routing and planning and optimizing. Um, it's just, you know, it's a, it's an innate, an innate skill, but we're kind of leveling the field and making everyone, no human can do what a computer can do in this, in this case, it's actually a huge math problem. So we, we even take the the best human at it and, and we, we make them way, way better. But if you're not, if you're a human who's not good at it, then, uh, then it's a massive difference. Well, my wife, you know, you, you can spin her around blindfold her and, uh, in the mall and she can, she can get anywhere. She, she was the MVP three years in a row, uh, <laughs> most valuable purchaser. Uh, well, congratulations. So they got a, she has a reserve parking spot. I mean, concierge <laughs> service. Uh, I mean, but I get totally lost. She's like, oh yeah, it's next to JC Penney's. I'm like, that doesn't tell me anything. Right. I, don't know, I think it's a mental block. I just don't want to know where anything is in the mall because I don't want to go. Yeah, you know, it's a weird thing because outside I'm really good at navigating. But same thing, you put me inside something, and I can get I can get pretty spun around. And malls, malls, it's it's real easy to get. Everything kind of looks the same, and but like and and and, and you don't know which direction is which because you're you, you you know you can't. You're, you're just, I feel like outside you're just able to kind of keep a gauge on which way is north and you know which direction you're going and. But inside, I kind of I can get lost. <laughs> airports, I can get totally lost in airports. I'm just like, wait, where where, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, this is fantastic, Steve Benson, BadgerMapping.com. Y'all mentioned the sales podcast. Get two months extra for free. Thanks for coming on the sales podcast, man. It's been awesome. Thanks for having me, Wes. This has been fantastic. All right, have a great day. Lots of takeaways there, huh? He blossomed where he was, right? He, he saw a problem and he solved it. You know, he's not, he wasn't this MBA Google mapping sales guy and jumped into, you know, pharmaceuticals or something. Um, but he had the courage to take decisive action, to leave behind a very comfortable job. You know, I've sold to Google. I've been on that campus many times, uh, walked around eating my fill of food uh, and snacks and coffee everywhere and energy drinks. I mean, their dry cleaning's paid for and there's beach volleyball and hot tubs and yoga and in these little sleeping pods. You can, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, and he just left that behind and made something happen, you know, and that's the great, you know, it's the American dream. It's the entrepreneurial spirit. It's alive and well, even in the left coast, California. Uh, and you know, so my hat's off to him for, uh, launching that for, um, bootstrapping it, uh, for being creative, you know, using LinkedIn to get his first customer, uh, launching his product, even though it sucked. And, you know, you can do that. And as long as you tell your prospects and your new customers that they're getting version one, right? Maybe they're getting version 0.5. Maybe they're getting version 0.1. But as long as you tell them and set the right expectations, you know, you get these bleeding edge early adopters. They like it. They like doing that stuff. One of my best customers when I was selling uh, out of Austin for that hardware uh, startup, we had a big, big client in Phoenix. Uh, And he was a former Navy guy. And he was really wanting to make a name for himself. And he liked being leading edge. And he tolerated the glitches that came with buying something early. And he bought a lot. So, you know, I always tell people, you are not your client. Maybe you're very calm and reserved and safe. You know, you drive a Volvo uh, and you would never be an early adopter like that. That's fine. You are not your customer. If you're selling something that is new that is leading edge, then look for those types of people. 
because you need to understand as a salesperson, you have to change the way you sell. Okay. To match the way that your customers buy. So just always remember you are not your customer. Uh, if something's new, be honest with them, tell them, maybe you cut them a deal, uh, because it's early. Maybe you don't cut them a deal, but you give them more access and input into how to shape the product. And they're happy to have that influence. Uh, it'll stroke their ego. And you know what? People buy very much emotionally and they justify it logically later on. They may be happy to pay early. You know what? You give them a plaque. Maybe you create a little company award in their name and they're happy with that. So stranger things have happened. Okay. Um, but you know, I've always said as well, if you're going to do it, you know, you always say if it's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. It's worth doing right. Well, the reality is if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Until you master it. You were terrible when you first tried to ride a bike, play a piano, dance. I'm terrible at jujitsu, but it's worth doing, so I keep doing it. And so anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. You know, Steve launched his app. Like he said, it sucked the first two years, but it was worth doing, so they made it better. So what are you working on now? What are you working on to become better? What are you striving to improve every day? Then keep doing that. Okay, keep the faith, surround yourself with people uh, that have the same drive, the same vision, the same determination. If you need some help with that, check out the program I mentioned at the top of the show, copybywest.com, C-O-P-Y-B-Y-W-E-S. The 90-day program, it's intense, it's affordable, uh, but not too affordable because I don't want everybody to do it. I don't have the bandwidth, um, but it's a way to get my one-on-one -on -one attention and assistance to straighten things out, sort things out, implement some tools, and get it done. Also, if you know some friends that need some help buying the right system, if you're, you see your friends struggling, maybe it's you. Maybe you've got um, you know Excel and Outlook and Google Docs and MailChimp and you're bootstrapping this stuff. you got Zoho's free CRM and everything's cobbled together. Nothing's in the same place. You don't have an affiliate program running. You know what? Check out referwest.com. If you know a friend like that, it's going crazy. Referwest.com. And if it's you, have one of your friends refer you. I'll go ahead and kick them back a little scratch. It's all right. I'm here to help. All right. Spread the love, baby. And hey, you can also spread the love by leaving a comment, leaving a five-star review for the, for the show on iTunes and uh, inviting your friends and coworkers to listen. All right. So thank you for listening. And remember to sell different.